Okay, this is the M1 paper from October 2021. Question number seven, and this is a big dynamics question. It's forces, acceleration, connected particles, we've got pulleys, we've got friction. Lots going on with this question. Uh, I'm going to assume you've taken the time to read through all this. Uh, otherwise, just explaining the question will take 20 minutes. But basically, we've got a standard scenario where we've got a pulley and two masses on either side of it. Uh, inextensible string, all, all the modelling uh, issues you would have. As we can see on the diagram, we've got 3M and 2M. Uh, probably the most important thing to look at is that it's a rough plane. So that means that I'm going to have um, friction on the plane. And we've also got this business that they sometimes do with tan alpha being equal to three quarters. So that means I've got to work out what sine and cos are. Um, one good thing about it is this is a 14 mark question here at least they break it down into step by step of what they want me to do. So find the equations of motion for both of them, then find the acceleration, then some business to do with forces on a pulley, and finally a modelling assumption at the end. So really good question, lots of um, stuff that we can use in other, in other papers to just uh, make sure that we understand all the basics. Let's get started then. So I am not going to try and put all my information on here. I'm actually going to draw out my own diagram down here and make it relatively big so that I can put all the information on. So I've basically got a flat there. Here's my plane. And then I've got my pulley at the top. I have this mass here and then obviously the string comes down and this mass here let's get started with putting all my forces on so i know that this force here the weight of that one is going to be 2 mg i would always every time i've got a particle touching a plane uh, put the reaction force on, the normal reaction at 90 degrees. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm going to put the two tensions in the string on. I'm now going to look at, this is particle A, isn't it, over here. I'm now going to look at particle B. Particle B has a mass acting down there, which is 3 mg. And then the friction force, so what does it tell us here? It tells me that it's um, a rough plane and when it's released, the particle book begins to move up the plane. So not only is there friction, I know friction is going to be going in that direction there. So those are all my forces done. I'll do my forces first of all, because they've told me about the acceleration. Uh, I like to put the acceleration on like that and down here with this way. So that'll help me when I'm resolving any forces later. Um, and the other thing I would do, my standard situation, if this is alpha here, then I want to, all my forces are going to be parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane for A. So I'm far more interested in knowing what's going on here for my 2mg. That angle there is alpha. And then if I resolve, I'm going to get 2 mg cos alpha and 2 mg sine alpha going in that direction and in that direction. So you can see quite a busy diagram already as we're going through. And they've given me this business over here, so I'll get that sorted out. If tan alpha is equal to three quarters, I can do a quick diagram here. I don't really normally do these. This is more for you guys. If alpha's, um, if alpha's there, tan is opposite over adjacent. I'm not doing the work involved to get that to be five. I know it's a three, four, five triangle. But what that then gives me is tan alpha equals three quarters means far more important. I can just see that I need sine alpha and cos alpha. And now I've got those ones there. That's three fifths and the other one's four fifths. And while we're about it, we may as well put on our coefficient of friction of mu equals a half there. And that's pretty much all the information I need 
to be able to get started and uh, work the way through this question. So it tells me in the question that they want to have an equation of motion for A. So they're, they're telling me which way to get started. Actually, normally, if it hadn't have done that, I'd have been looking at this one here simply because it's quicker and easier to work out. But no, they, they've asked me for A. So if I'm going to do A, let's make it clear what I'm doing. So part A here. Let's say consider A. And then what I'm going to do, I can do two different things. I can resolve parallel to the plane. I can resolve perpendicular to the plane. Actually, three things as well, because I can always do F equals mu R. When you watch other ones of my videos, I'm going to start in a relatively standardized sort of way in that I would always, if I had the option, start by resolving perpendicular to the plane. The reason being that on most of these questions, um, it's going to be an equilibrium and I'm just going to get R equals 2 mg cos in this question, in this case, sorry. So um, because I know what I'm doing with this one, I tend to start with that. J just check because there might be other forces acting, but there aren't on this one. So, oops, sorry. Tell the examiner what I'm doing. Resolve perpendicular to the plane. And F equals MA just gives me in this situation that R is going to be equal to 2mg cos alpha. And we know cos alpha is 4 fifths, so that works out to be 8mg over 5. The second step here then, would I always do F equals mu R to work out what F is as simplistically as I can. So in this case, F is going to be equal to mu, remember, was a half. R, because we've just worked it out, because of the order in which I do these things, is half of 8mg over 5. So that's 4mg over 5. Right, that's really helpful then, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve parallel to the plane. I've got those three forces all being involved in my F equals MA. Um, and I've got pretty much everything that I need there. So let's say resolve parallel to the plane. I always put these labels on. It doesn't take too long to do it. And yet it just makes it much easier for anybody marking my work. Resolve parallel to plane. To see the steps, the order in which I'm doing these things. And to follow my work through. Just in case, hopefully I won't make a mistake. But just in case I make any sort of mistakes here. So going back to that one then. This is where now the idea of having the acceleration put on the diagram shows me that when I'm trying to do F equals MA, I know that this way those forces are overcoming those forces. So when I'm doing my F equals MA, let's just hide up my diagram for later, get rid of that, that, and that, I know that T is going to be bigger than the F and the 2mg sign. So when I work that out, I'm going to say T minus f minus 2 mg sine alpha is equal to mass times acceleration which is 2 m times acceleration so that's giving me that one there put in all the information i know so i know that f is 4 mg over 5 and i know that um, sine alpha is 3 fifths so this is going to be 6mg over 5 is equal to 2ma. And tidying that up then, I could say t minus, what's that? 10mg over 5, well 10mg over 5 is 2m, 2mg, isn't it? So t minus 2mg equals 2ma. I'm going to label that number 1, and in effect, that's my first equation of motion. Let's go back and look at uh, A parts, that's A part one. A part two is finding the equation of motion for B. So consider B. So even if they hadn't told me to do it in this order, I would have done it anyway. But actually it's really nice for them to at least give me a little bit of an idea of what's going on. B, as I said, is much, much simpler because we're just going to resolve vertically there. We've just got a situation with T and the 3mg. 
And again, the idea of having that acceleration there on the diagram means I know that the three mg must be bigger. So when I'm gonna, let's just do it rather than talking about it, I'm going to resolve vertically. If you get fed up of uh, writing down vertically in parallel and perpendicular, nothing to stop you doing that, putting an arrow. Resolve vertically, F equals MA is gonna be three mg minus T is equal to three MA. And let's say that's a much simpler equation motion to find for part B there, because we've got far fewer forces acting in that situation. Right, so hopefully I've got four marks. Let's keep going then. And well, if you've done lots of these questions, this actually, actually isn't too bad. They want me to find the acceleration. And because I've got my two equations, we're always going to have very similar sort of style of equations here. So I'm hoping this is absolutely no problem to you that if I add those two equations together, the t's will cancel out and I'll be able to get my acceleration. So if you've done any sort of revision and you're good at this sort of topic, then this really isn't that bad at all. So for part B here, uh, to find A, because I've labeled them, I can just say one plus two here. If you wanna write them underneath each other and do them like you do simultaneously, great. I'm not gonna bother just because in terms of times on this video, yeah, when I add these two together, I'm going to get 3mg minus 2mg is equal to 3ma plus 2ma. So I get um, mg equals 5ma. Cancel out the m's, obviously. A is going to work out to be equal to g over 5 here. As we're looking through, nice neat answer um, for part B there. So I've done the four marks, I've done the five marks there. Part C, it says find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. Now at this stage I would, um, I'll probably put a link to this video um, in this one. I've done a separate video on what we do when we've got forces acting on a pulley. So what I'm going to do is to, to direct you to that. I'll still do this question, but uh, I'm not going to take too much detail here because I've done it in a separate video as well. So when they're asking us to find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string, I'm now actually going to add something that I, I, intentionally, I wouldn't have put this on up until this stage because if they're not mentioning forces with pulleys, then I don't need to. But now what we can say is in terms of the pulley, We've actually got that business going on as well. And so I'm now going to focus on what's going on with the pulley. Before I do that, I need to work out what the tension is. So let's go away and work out the tension because we'll get marks for it. And then I'll come back and talk about uh, the forces on the pulley. So, so first of all, to find T, we're just going back to either number one or number two because we've got A equals G over five. I'm going to use number one simply because it's an easier one to use. You don't have to. You can use number two if you want to. But uh, to find T from number one, we had T minus 2mg equals 2ma, so equals 2m, g over 5. So T works out to be, just take that over to the side and add it, it comes to... 12 mg over five, another nice, neat answer. Um, so now we're talking about finding the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley. So just imagine, in fact, I'll actually just quickly draw the diagram out again. Um, so we've got the situation here where we've got that this angle here is alpha, got the pulley at the top there. I've got the string coming down and the string coming down there. So the force then that we are looking for, and this is the work that I'm not going to spend ages explaining to you, is if I have a tension there and a tension there, then Resolving those two that's not really diagram, resolving those two forces is going to give me this situation here, and this is two t 
cos theta. Okay, so you only have a number of different possibilities for pulleys, and I've explained it in the, in the video that I'm trying to plug here. Go away and look at it. I'm just straight away going to say that that is going to be my answer. The force exerted on the pulley is 2t cos theta. What I've got to do is to work out, sorry, goodness, I didn't make that mistake. It's 2t cos, it's half the angle, 2t cos theta there, sorry. Now make sure you're watching the whole of the video. It's 2t cos theta there, and you can just quote that and then using it. So I'm now gonna say that force exerted on the pulley equals 2t cos theta. And now let's just do a bit of work working out what theta is going to be here. Well, this is a right angle triangle here. So if this angle is 90, theta is just going to work out to be 90 minus alpha, but then it's half of it divided by 2. Now, remember, we know what alpha is because we know that tan alpha is equal to 3 quarters. So uh, if tan alpha equal 3 quarters, alpha worked out to be, it's 36, I think, 36.9 degrees. So now the force is equal to 2t cos theta, which is equal to to, well, we know what T was, we just worked it out, 12 mg over 5, cos 90 minus 36.9 divided by 2, cos theta there, and that works out to be 42 m, if you do it to two significant figures. So a really complicated question that can be done relatively straightforward as long as you're prepared to go away watch the other video that i've done and learn forces um, acting on pulleys there's three four different examples and i just go through each one and explain how they all work out okay and then on to part d part d is dead straightforward part d is a modeling question show how you've used the information that p is a smooth pulley well again i plug another video here that i've done um, there's about five or six different versions of this sort of question that we can have. And what I've done is to put them all on one video. Again, I'll link that to here. So go away and just make sure you're aware of them all. And in this case, if the pulley is smooth, what that's telling us or what we can take from that is that the tensions are the same. Then the tensions are the same. On either side of the pulley, or oh, that's good enough. On either side of the pulley, only one mark, but we don't want to lose it. I say the video, the modeling assumptions video, talks about um, the various different questions they can ask you. Uh, what does it mean if the force acts at a point, etc., etc., etc.? Go away and watch that video as well. Okay, big long video there, and a plug for two other videos. Uh, make sure that you've gone and have a look at those and hopefully that makes sense.